As you're well aware, we're living in unprecedented times. Join us now for today's special program. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. Lord, let Spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life mending broken people. Nice job, Jill. Hello and welcome to another 3ABN Today program. I'm Jill Morricone and we're so excited that you have taken time from your day to sit down with us or if you're in your car, you're listening to this program. One of my favorite things about the Today program is that we get to feature ministries, what God is doing in and through people's lives, not just here in the United States, but around the world. Mm -hmm. The ministry we are featuring today is near and dear to our heart here at 3ABN. I'm speaking of ASAP Ministries, and they have an incredible ministry particularly focused on the 1040 window, impacting the lives lives of the poor, the persecuted, and the unreached people groups. So I'm excited about this program and I know the Lord is going to use it to not only touch you with the stories, but to touch us, to motivate us, to get involved in reaching out mm -hmm. and helping other people as well as supporting this incredible ministry. I want to introduce our special guest today. We have Julia O'Carey and she is the executive director of ASAP Ministries. Julia, it's just a joy to have you back here at 3ABN again. It's wonderful to be here. We just love 3ABN and are so grateful for your ministry here too, Jill. Amen. We always love it when you can come, Julia, and you can share what God is doing in and through the ministry. So we're looking forward to that. And I'm uh, hoping I'm going to pronounce her name right. We have Pastor Lisa Eisensee, and she is the Mission Advancement Officer for ASAP Ministries. Mm -hmm. And Pastor Lisa, it's a joy to have you here too. Thank you. It's so good to be here. God is doing so much around the world. We were commenting about how exciting it is that there's so many ministries God is using Amen. to finish his work. Amen. It's very, very neat. And you came to 3ABN years ago. We were just talking yeah. before we started the program. This was with Tiny Tots. How many years ago was that? I think 10. I think 10. Wow. Yeah. So that was good memories with Auntie Linda and Miss Brenda, Miss Cinda. Miss Cinda, that's right, absolutely. With your yeah. kids, right? Yeah, with, uh, with, we have five children. Yeah. And um, it was our, two of our middle ones that were in that programming oh, at that time. Wow. That's very special, absolutely. So Julia, tell us just a little bit, what is ASAP Ministries? I know we featured your ministry before, but what if someone's watching the first time and they say, what does that stand for? And sure. what is this ministry all about? Sure. ASAP Ministries is for Advocates for Southeast Asians and the Persecuted. And so what we're all about is to multiply disciples Christ's way. And the way we do that is um, we empower and train local people to be missionaries to the poor, the persecuted, unreached refugees. And we do that just by God's grace and his power. And so we have church planting, that's our main emphasis. Okay. And we have schools and different holistic projects like wells and other things just to reach the people so they see Christ in action. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now you focus specifically on the 1040 window, but what is the 1040 window? Someone says, what countries does that represent? What's that represent? So it's, if you look at the globe, it's, um, it's between the 10 degrees north and 40 degrees north, the latitude lines is approximately where the 1040 window is. It's also sometimes called the resistant band Ooh. because that's the area where it's largely Muslim, Hindu, and Buddhist. And just a number of, you know, 
a number of countries and areas where it's where people don't know about Jesus. Wow. Mm -hmm. What an incredible ministry. Mm -hmm. Now this was founded by your mom, right? Mm -hmm. Tell yes. us about that. Mm -hmm. Yes, Judy Aiken, my mother founded this. Actually, it goes back even beyond that because when I was a child, mm -hmm. my family worked in Thailand in the refugee camps. I you know, in the early 80s when Pol Pot was um, in Cambodia and refugees from Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, were all flooding into Thailand. So that's where it all started. And during that time, over 10,000 people were baptized in the refugee camps. It was such really? a miracle, yeah. And so then from that, um, all those war-torn countries, people had to go back after the war was over, but there was no official structure to help them. And so my mom worked with the Adventist system in the church to start church plants and to establish the work in those countries. And it's just grown and grown by God's grace. So what was it like as a child? Growing up, seeing the need, seeing the poverty, seeing the war-torn countries, how did that impact you and influence your life for mission? I don't think I'd be doing what I'm doing now if I hadn't had those experiences, mm -hmm. but it was such a joy to learn how to serve. Yeah. And when children can get involved in ministry, that's and right. go and help and do whatever little things that we can, yeah. it changes something deep inside our hearts. And so it just puts this bug in my heart to share the gospel with the world. It gives a different worldview, mm -hmm. a different perspective. Like they're my brothers and sisters, they're my friends. I don't see any difference, even though they may eat something different or speak something different in a different way, but yeah, it did impact a lot. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so I know we're going to get into what ASAP Ministries is doing and specifically you have a lot of videos and pictures and other things, projects that you're involved in. But tell me just a bit about your family, Julia, and then we'll go to you, Pastor yeah. Lisa. Yeah, sure. I'm married to AJ and he's a counselor and I have two daughters, an 18-year-old and a 13-year-old. And we live in the country and it's just such a blessing. Love my family. Amen. Yeah. Country living's a blessing and family is a gift from yes. God. Yes. Mm -hmm. What about you, Pastor Lisa? Tell us a bit about your story. My, my husband is Richard Eisensee and he's, he's an engineer and we have five children. And it's, I feel so blessed because um, when, when I was, when we were first um, coming back to Wisconsin, I was pregnant with our first child and I thought I'm just gonna be home with our kids. And God just kind of took us on a little different journey. Instead, we went into church planting and, and I was able to work part-time in that, but then also homeschool our five children. So it's really been a blessing. And in fact, our, all five of our kids have been on at least one mission trip with ASAP, but some of them four now. <laughs> so they're great you know, missionaries. How, they're incredible missionaries. <laughs> amen. It's, it is incredible for our children to have that experience. It changes yeah. them. I would, I would just highly, highly recommend if you have children and you want them to be passionate about, about other people and about mm. missions, that you would, you would have them be part of a mission trip. Amen. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. So that's beautiful. So God calls us all to be involved in mission work. That's in right. fact, our scripture for today is Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Then he said, Jesus speaking to them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to yes. send out laborers into his harvest. Mm -hmm. And that's what ASAP Ministries is all about. And that's what we're encouraging you today to pray the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers. Mm -hmm. And that labor can be you and it can be me, it can be all of us. So before we go any further, we're gonna to go to a special song and then we'll come back and really unpack what the ministry is doing. The song is brought to us today by Message of Mercy. I love their music, group of women. And this song is entitled Total Praise. Your peace you give. 
Thank you so much, Message of Mercy. Total praise. I love that song. If you are just joining us, our special guest today is no stranger. If you've watched 3ABN for any length of time, this is ASAP Ministries. And we're so blessed to have them here talking about the impact that you and I can make, that ASAP Ministries makes through the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit on the lives of the poor and the persecuted and the unreached people groups, especially in the 1040 window. We have Julia O'Carey, who's executive director, and just very glad to have you here. Mm -hmm. And we have Pastor Lisa Eisensee, mm -hmm. who is the mission advancement officer. And to be here. It's a privilege to have both of you here. So let's talk just a moment about um, ASAP Ministries. I think we have an opening picture kind of setting the stage for this ministry. So what our ministry does, it really focuses on the suffering, the persecuted, the poor, these types of people who don't get a lot of care and attention. And so um, the verse that we have is what we do for the suffering we do for Jesus. Aww. And so... You'll see um, as we talk about different projects of how we're actually accomplishing our ministry mm -hmm. by reaching those poor people who really need the help. Amen. Yeah. Amen. One of the things we're very excited about, if you can go on to the next picture, is that we have over 600 ethnic missionaries mm -hmm. um, really? working in different countries, some of them closed countries that we don't even mention which countries they are. And the, the exciting thing, and we started the... Our, our program with Luke 10 2 is that there are so many more places, so many more places that could be reached for Jesus, so many more ethnic missionaries that you could be supporting. And it's, you know, it's not, it's not like here in the States where to have a, to have a full-time worker, it would be thousands and thousands of dollars every year. Um, but for $90 or $100, $130 a month, a full-time person can be working for Jesus in these countries. So it's, it's, it's something that many people can be involved in, um, regardless of what your budget might be. Mm -hmm. So let me get that straight. You said for $90 or $100? Or $130, depending on the country. There's different... You, you know, can sponsor yeah. an ethnic missionary. Yes. yes. Wow. So they're church planters... Bible workers, medical missionaries, teachers, yeah. because we're trying to reach them in different ways. Mm -hmm. And so we have different types of workers and we train them up, we equip them, and we send them out to these unreached villages that where people have never heard about Jesus, never heard about the gospel. So there's a, go ahead. There's a, um, one of our hardworking board members said, I love it because when I go to bed at night, I know that I am supporting people that are working while I'm sleeping. <laughs> They're working for Jesus <laughs> while I'm sleeping. <laughs> I love that. So tell me, what is an ethnic missionary? What does that even mean? So ethnic missionary means that there are people who are from that area that know the language, know the culture, mm -hmm. that are there to stay that are connected with the community. So they're very effective mm -hmm. because they can reach areas where I could never go because either there's communism or there's um, language barriers or political barriers. So it's really wonderful to be able to train these people. And not all of them have like a high college education, but they have faith and they love the Lord. And they're passionate about what they do and they're effective. Amen. We yeah. see so many results. Yeah. Amen. That's amazing. So there's 600 of these. Yes. Over. So over 600. 600. And many, many more that we could have. Yeah. You know? yeah. Amen. That's incredible. Yeah. And the way that we try to reach people, because there's so much culture and prejudice against Christianity in these countries, is by meeting the real needs. So the next slide just kind of uh, um, shows a little bit about that, that we try to find ways to connect with the people. What do they need? Do they need clean water? Do they need health? Do they need education? And so one example is the Allen Training Center. Um, the Allen Training Center is a medical missionary training center in Myanmar that we just okay. established. And that center is training up our missionaries, even if they're church planters oh. or whatever they are, to be medical missionaries, because medical missionary work is the right arm of the gospel. Absolutely. You know 
And so if you want to show the next picture, this just shows a little story. There was this young man who became Adventist, and he um, unfortunately was so persecuted by his family because of his faith, mm -hmm. and he had so much stress, he couldn't focus on his exams, and he, he got hopeless even though he found Jesus. He thought, I can't. I can't be a Christian in my country. It's too hard. Mm. And so he decided to commit suicide and he drank poison oh. and he almost died. But the Medical Missionary Center um, leader, Dr. Twile and her team worked to rehabilitate him and help him. His organs have healed. He's gaining weight now. And we prayed for him and God answered our prayer and rescued this The Lord man. spared his life. The Lord spared his life. And because of that witness, um, his father, who's a Buddhist monk, you can see a picture of him here. His heart is open. Mm -hmm. And this picture is him getting fomentation treatments for his back problems at the center. This, this was this just his, a week ago. So this is the young man who had tried to commit suicide. It's his father. His the Buddhist father man. that was so opposed. Wow. So there's so much power in reaching out to their real needs. Um, God is using the center and many other projects um, through the 1040 window. That's incredible. Praise the Lord for how he works. I love to hear mission stories Amen. and stories of miracles that God performs and that he does. Yes. Let's shift a moment and talk about the schools. I know ASAP Ministries has an incredible outreach to young people and specifically at risk youth. So talk to us about that. Yes, we are so excited because we see how God can use schools to church plant, to impact, mm -hmm. and to bring people to the gospel. Because when kids who are Buddhist hear about Jesus and hear those stories, it actually changes their worldview. And I have a little slide just so that you know that we have over 80 schools for at-risk children. Aww. And so these are the children, Jill, that are poor, that are in the most worst situation. When I say at risk, they're at risk for being trafficked, um, for work or sex trafficking. They're at risk of abuse. They're in war zones. Like, let me give you just a couple examples. Just a few weeks ago, in one area where we have a school, right on the border between Thailand and Myanmar, mm -hmm. a soldier went up to a lady right near the school and said, give me that plastic bag. And she said, no, I have my fruit in it. And he shot her three times dead. This is the type oh. of, of environment that they live in. It's just heartbreaking. And then in the schools in Cambodia, these kids are at risk of being trafficked. And let me give you an example of that. I was teaching the teachers because um, I'm, a, I'm a teacher. I have my a master's in education, so that's one of my joys is to go over and get yes. to teach these teachers. Amen. Yeah, and one of the teachers told me um, that she was teaching about careers and just a normal thing, and she was asking the children, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. And one little girl that's rather new um, raised her hand, and she said, I want to be a prostitute. And the teacher just was shocked, and she said, why do you want to be a prostitute? And she said, well, my auntie says that I can have nice dresses. And that's her mm -hmm. worldview. But then after education and teaching her, now she wants to be a nurse because she wants to help mm -hmm. heal people. Oh. And so that's the difference that these schools are making for these children who have no opportunity and who are really at risk. And so it's just a joy to be able to see the changes and the difference. And we have a little video that shows the change in one of our students' lives and what he's doing now. Okay, yeah. let's take a look at that now. Bui Wanfu dropped out of school at the age of six when his father died of AIDS. His mother was also infected and struggled to find work. When Fu finally returned to school, he couldn't read or write, and he struggled to concentrate on his studies. But through the care of his teachers at the Cambodian Adventist Vietnamese School, his grades improved dramatically. He also discovered a talent for music and a love for Jesus. And three years ago, 
both Fu and his mother were baptized. He once was a struggling student, but today he teaches second grade at the school where his life story changed forever. It is the joy of ASAP teachers like Fu to help students who are going through difficult times. But many students and teachers are still awaiting the faithful prayers and support of a donor like you. Will you become part of their story today? Because Jesus is coming soon. Now more than ever, mission matters. Amen. What an impactful story. Yeah. You know, when I um, go there year after year and I see these little kids grow up and I remember Fu and how naughty he was as a little boy and then now I see him just being used by God and it just really touches my heart. Um, each of these children are important. A second grade teacher now, mm -hmm. reaching out, ministering, just yes. <laughs> tell me how you first began the schools. Mm -hmm. How were they initiated? I know they're all for at-risk children, like Fu, or like that story you told of the girl who said she wants to grow up and be a prostitute, and then yeah. the Lord got a hold of her heart and showed her her value, and now she wants to be a nurse. But tell me how you started the schools. Mm -hmm. Well, we saw when we had the church plants that there were these children in the slums that were rummaging around and um, trying to find things in the garbage dumps to recycle just to have enough to eat oh. and live on. And we thought, wow, they're not going to school. They don't even have enough money to go to the government schools mm -hmm. because they, they don't have money for a uniform or, or Shoes. bags. Shoes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I went out there in these garbage dumps and it broke my heart to see these kids like rummaging around. And so we thought we have to do something for them. Mm -hmm. And so we started a school and we called it the Feed and Read School. Ooh. And we had hot, healthy meals for them because when we didn't do that, they wouldn't come because they, they didn't have the food. <laughs> and so that's how we started. And we've seen how God has grown and developed these schools in such beautiful ways. And now some of the children, they no longer dig in the dumps. Some of them are even literature evangelists with their parents and they go and sell God's mm -hmm. word to people. Yeah, it's Amen. beautiful. And now there's 80 plus schools. Yes. Thousands of children, you know, thousands of students. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Even just in some of our schools, there'll be thousands, you know, like yes. it's a number, number of young people. Yeah. And what I love about these schools is that we're very intentional on discipleship. Yes. And so in the next little video you're going to see is of a young man who became Adventist, but he's really struggled because they're in a culture that just works against them being Adventist, all the family. But yet with the discipleship, with the principal praying, and they meet in small groups, they study the word, they do united prayer, and it's so consistent in their lives that they build up that faith so that they can be strong. And so I want you to meet Chai Den. It's just a short little story of his um, decision. Amen. Yeah. Let's go to that now. Chaiden attends the Tagong Adventist School in northwestern Cambodia. Although he was raised in a Buddhist family, he started to believe in God through the Bible classes and discipleship small groups at the school. The school's principal, Pastor Sang Makura, noticed a spiritual transformation taking place in the young man's life. But then, Chaiden's older brother passed away. Traditionally, in the Cambodian family, whenever one family member passes away, the remaining boy in the family must become a monk for three days. Shai Den's father insisted that he become a monk. He agreed to do it and went to the temple. He shaved his head and dressed in the saffron robes. I know the culture and I knew that was expected, so I prayed hard for Shai Den the whole day. That evening, he left the temple and came to our small group meeting. During United Prayer, he expressed true repentance for his decision and promised God to never turn back to Buddhism again. I teach him that as a Christian, he needs to be diligent 
and respectful to his parents. Since he has put that into practice and worked hard for his parents, their love for him has increased. Today, they allow him to come to the church freely, and they tell me that their son made the right decision to become a Christian. Chiden was one of the 17 students and parents baptized recently at the Tekong Adventist School. We praise God for their decisions and for sponsors like you, whose generous gifts provide teacher stipends and school fees for students like Chai Den. ASAP Ministries supports more than 70 schools serving impoverished and unreached communities in Southeast Asia and elsewhere in the 1040 window. Would you consider becoming a sponsor today to bring Christian education and the gospel message to these precious children of God? Because Jesus is coming soon. Now more than ever, mission matters. Amen. I love to see his little face chide in and to see how God enabled him to stand up for Jesus and then how his parents turned around. What a beautiful story. Amen. What do you use for the curriculum in the schools there? Well, we use the government curriculum, but then we supplement it with the Bible. And so we translated my Bible first oh, curriculum. Yeah. And it's beautiful. We put in some pictures of Asian fruit instead of American fruit and things like that. <laughs> but we love that curriculum because it takes them through the Bible stories very clearly and it includes um, spirit of prophecy mm -hmm. as well. And we also did a curriculum called Growing Safe Rooted in God's Love. And that's specifically focusing on how to keep them safe from abuse and trafficking and things like that and how to get their identity in Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful curriculum that Adventists worked on. And it goes through and when we were doing that, we thought, you know, we want something to supplement this. And so I have something I want to show you. Yay! <laughs> we have, show and tell a tool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have these cuddly mega voices. And you're wondering, what in the world is that? Well, in the pocket here of the, little elephant. Of the, of the animals, of the little stuffed animal, we have a mega voice. And on this mega voice, is the Bible recorded in their language, oh. plus the stories and the memory verses and songs from the curriculum mm -hmm. so that it can wash over their minds when they go home and go to sleep. And so we have enough of these for all the students in Cambodia. We've raised enough money, but we need more <laughs> because we have thousands of kids and I want to make sure I get this right. We have 3,174 students in Myanmar and the border between Thailand and Myanmar oh, wow. that we don't have these for yet. And it's $35 for one of these. Oh. And so that comes to a total of $111,000 for this project. But we really believe these ch children are worth it. Oh, absolutely. Amen. And what a difference this can make for them in making them feel safe, making them sleep can better. I, hold one? <laughs> <laughs> I want the little tight. Okay. So this would be the Bible in their language. Yeah. Yes. This would songs also be songs language. in their language. Curriculum, Bible the curriculum. curriculum in their language. Mm -hmm. So when they go to sleep at night, maybe their home isn't safe, maybe they're afraid, they can cuddle mm -hmm. and they can listen to God's word. To who they are in God. Yeah. Wow. What's what's neat too if you think about it, um, thirty-five dollars to invest in a young person yeah. for their spiritual growth is an incredible investment. Somebody might say, you know, at my child's birthday, I want to give money for this, or at Christmas time, mm -hmm. this is something that that a, a school could do is to raise money for these, or mm -hmm. uh, you know, many different different ways, because even the kids they're going to see this and say, boy, I would like that. Of course, yeah. I was a and, and I, what you need to realize, too, most of the children that may be listing, they might have lots of stuffed animals. Mm -hmm. But in their, you know, in these places, they might not have any toys. Yeah. Um, I, my daughter was there on a mission trip, and, and she came back, and 
she had um, brought things to this school and done done some different um, activities with them but then she was interviewing the students mm -hmm. and she said have you had any answered prayers Aww. and the little child said you know was holding this stuffed animal that had just been given to them and said, yes yes you know and she said what is it she said I prayed that God would give me one toy Aww. and you know they had so this is just an incredible thing that the schools and churches, families could be involved in mm -hmm. to raise that 111,000 or something yes. dollars. So we want to encourage you at home. We will put up contact information for ASAP Ministries yeah. at the end of the program, but for $35, mm -hmm. yeah. you can sponsor one of these for a child and for 111,000, what was the exact amount? 111,000. $111,000, you can do that specifically for that entire region, for all the students in Myanmar. And, and Thailand. And Thailand. Mm -hmm. And I know earlier, Pastor Lisa, you talked about the ethnic missionaries and how for $90 or 100 or was it 120, 130? 130, I think is 130, you could sponsor an ethnic missionary. Yeah. So what an incredible opportunity right. you have at home. You might be saying, I can't travel overseas and I can't do that, but you can get involved and you can help spread Jesus yeah. to those who are marginalized, to those who are impacted, to the poor and the oppressed. That's so right. yeah. let's switch gears a little bit. We've been talking about the schools and the curriculum and the incredible impact that ASAP Ministries has with the schools. Talk to us, Pastor Lisa, about the work for the persecuted in these closed countries. Well, one of the things that I want to share as we're transitioning into, the, into our closed countries is oftentimes education and church planting go hand in hand. For instance, last year I was in Myanmar and I was um, talking with, with one of our ethnic missionaries and he was sharing how his dream is as a pastor to be a church planter, to, to go into areas that have never heard um, the word of God and to share it with them. But he said, you know, even though I'm trained as a pastor, I decided that what I needed to do is I needed to go into a village and I would go into that village and I would say, um, I can come and I can be a teacher for you. Aww. So he went into an area that was very close to Christianity and he came and he said, please gather all the elders together. Mm -hmm. And he knew they needed a school. In fact, they had never had someone with more than sixth grade education as the teacher. Oh, wow. And so he, they brought all the elders together in one of the huts and they started talking and he said, I'm willing to come and be your teacher. You, I will come, you won't even have to pay <laughs> me. Um, but you need to know that I will share Jesus. I will tell Bible stories, I will sing Christian songs. And the, you know, the elders kind of looked back and they said, we don't, you know, we don't like that, we don't like Christians, we don't like Christianity, we certainly don't want a Christian teaching our kids. And then somebody across the, this um, home, this hut said, well, I'm just curious, what education do you have? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I'm a college graduate. <laughs> you know, they all just kind of sat back and said, well, you know. Because they were a lot of them only sixth grade. Oh, that was the, that was the highest their teacher, teacher had ever had in their village. <laughs> and so they looked at each other and, they, and one influential uh, elder said, we need to do this for the sake of our children. Oh, wow. And so in this village, children are coming from two other villages to this school. He teaches in the morning and the afternoon, and then he takes a little break, and then he teaches the, the um, teenagers that have now had to go off into the fields and be working right. in the evening. Wow. And he said, please pray for me. Please pray for me because my um, dream is to plant at least three churches in this area where I'm teaching. So here's just one of our ethnic missionaries that's making an incredible difference mm -hmm. for Jesus. Mm -hmm. So exciting what God is doing. We have some other stories like that. And if you can go to the next picture, um, uh, one of, I was there a couple years ago and we were in partnership with another ministry, Unjai. And um, we, we had gone into, into a city where we were doing an eyeglass clinic with Unjai ASAP and we're, and Unjai were yes. partnering together on this. And here, all these people were coming that were refugees. And they were, you know, it was illegal for them to be there. Yeah. But most of them in this particular group that we were ministering to had had to flee their country. Uh, I, 
I sat there and interviewed people and I just was crying after almost every interview because when they became Christians, their neighbors and their own family members were threatening to kill them. And so these families had to do something. They had to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so they would flee to the, the closest place or the place that they could get in quickest, but then they couldn't get, um, you know, papers there, partly because they were Christian. Mm -hmm. And so they were just sharing some of what was going on. And I talked to one young man, his, his mom would not even do a, a side shot where it was just a silhouette, like a black silhouette, because she said someone in our country might recognize us and figure out where we were. Oh, wow. And, but she said, I think it's okay for him to be interviewed, you know, just that black silhouette, because she said, it's, you know, it's been four years, mm -hmm. three, four years since we've been there. I don't think they'll recognize him. And so they, they um, said, he started to tell me his story. And he shared about how right, right then his father was in the internally, or um, in the detention center for, for illegal immigrants in this country. Oh, wow. And this is nothing like, uh, you know, if you think of a prison and then you think 10 times worse, that there's not room to lie down and sleep. So they take turns sleeping for a few hours at a time. They don't have enough money. So many things like this, you know, it's just Do awful. they work them during the day? Is it like a work camp? Or? I don't think so. No. They're just okay. stuck there and, you know, just basically, it, it seemed like shoulder to shoulder as they talked about it. And, and how long had his father been there? I, I think he had been in prison for a year wow. in, this, in this detention camp for a year. And, uh, you know, I, I'm hearing all of these very sorrowful things. And I said to him, tell me, what do you see Jesus doing in your future? You know what? Tell me about what, what you are hoping for. And he had already told me he was so excited because he didn't realize he was coming to a Seventh-day Adventist outreach. Mm -hmm. And when we, he heard that, he said, oh, my dad, you know, we're Seventh-day Adventists. My dad's a Seventh-day Adventist wow. pastor. And so here at the end of this interview, I'm asking him, tell me, what hopes do you have? What plans? And he got tears in his eyes. And it'll make me get tears in my eyes right now. But he said, I want to be a pastor. I want to be a Seventh-day Adventist Aww. pastor like my dad. Here his dad is in prison because he's a Christian, because he's a Christian pastor. And he said, this is what I want to do. I want to be a Seventh-day Adventist pastor. So beautiful. God is working in these places. We call them our guidop countries. You know, God's work in dangerous, oppressive places. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Greet up. So God's work in dangerous, oppressive places. Yeah. Wow. Now, we've had to change how we work with these countries even because it is dangerous. Sometimes we cannot even go in and get the pictures and get the interviews that we would like to. You know, we still work on getting those interviews. But what you can do is you can sponsor. You can be a Greet up sponsor. And for $100 a month, you can effectively be sponsoring one of these workers for Jesus or different projects in, a persecuted in these closed countries country where we don't even country. say the names wow. of these countries because it's dangerous for the people who are in them. Sometimes we have to blur their faces. Um, mm -hmm. So it can really make an incredible difference. I if you go to the next picture, I want to share a story of a friend of mine. Um, I'm going to call him Pastor B, and mm -hmm. Pastor B is in a closed country. If you go on. These are actually another friend of mine in a closed country. But if you go to this one, Pastor B is the youth director in his country and also works with ASAP mm -hmm. Ministries. And his father has an incredible legacy. He was a, an amazing man of faith mm -hmm. for God. In fact, thousands came into um, the church, into, into became Christians because of his ministry. Oh, wow. And I had the first person that I interviewed quite a few years ago now um, was his father. And he told me about how he had been pr in prison um, for a total of less than, uh, well, less than five years, almost five years that he had been in prison. One of the times was four and a half years. Well, this last um, time that I was in Southeast Asia, I was talking to Pastor B. And I said, Pastor B, um, tell me about your childhood because what was it like for you mm -hmm. when you were a child and your dad was in prison for four and a half years just for being a Christian mm. and, and sharing his faith mm. 
and he started to share these stories that were just incredible. And in fact, last night I spoke with him and heard a little bit more. He was, um, he was five years old. If you can imagine this, he was five years old when, he, when his dad was put in prison. And it was, um, his family here, his mom is with three kids. How is she supposed to support them? Of course. You know, she's trying to figure it out and she was able to get word to his uncle. And his uncle, who was not a Christian, said, you, yes, you come to our village. And so he brought them to their village. Here they're in a village. They are the only Christians in this entire village. Mm. In fact, they only became Christians because for a little while they were in a refugee camp. Mm -hmm. And so um, he, he shared about how, you know, the other parents told the children, you see him? Don't be friends with him mm -hmm. because his father is a convict. He's in prison. He'll be a bad influence on you. Don't be friends with him. Can you imagine growing up like that? Yeah. Growing up under that oppression and that ridicule and that yeah. sadness at having yeah. your dad gone? Sometimes we think of the persecution that the adults face. Of course. But it's the children too That's in right. these closed countries. That's right. And so he shared about how he would go to school and the teacher would be so mean to him. He said it was so hard to learn. But when he would, he would sneak out in the afternoon after school or before school was even out because he knew if we're gonna eat tonight, my family needs help. Oh. And so at five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, maybe even until he was 10, he would go out into the woods and he would pick um, fiddleheads, the ferns as they were just coming up and he would pick other things that he knew were edible and bring them back. And he'd take his, his um, like half gallon engine oil uh, pails, cans, and he would bring them a kilometer down to the river to get water and three times every day he would bring that back for his family to have enough water to eat and to clean up with and to to cook with and he's just a little kid he's just a little kid he's just a little kid his mom you know was taking the baby on her hip out into the fields to work on her little bit of forest that she had cleared out to be a, a rice rice paddy and to grow corn and so incredible because he shared last night, I had never heard this story before. He said, you know, God took care of us mm -hmm. during those years. In fact, my uncle would tell my mom, you need to divorce your husband and there's another man in this village who wants to marry you. She oh. said, no, I'll be faithful to my husband. I'll be faithful to God. Mm -hmm. And God will be faithful to us, I'm sure is what she was thinking. And she would go out there and she would grow her crops. Well, he shared about how at the end of the year before their harvest, they would be, all, all of the villagers would be out of, out of rice except for their family. Oh, yay! <laughs> and he said, Lord. you know, we would just, cut, we would say it must be God because here's one woman feeding four people. Yeah. And then, you know, there's these other families where they have teenagers that are out there working to much bigger fields. Right. And yet God took care of them. He shared about how a, a huge problem in this jungle, it was way off the beaten track. And a huge problem was in the barns where they would sh uh, store the food um, that rats and the mice would come in mm. and just, you know, eat and eat on the food. In fact, it was a weekly chore that the children would chase the rats and the mice away. He said, we never ever saw mice or rats in our barn. They, they just didn't come. <laughs> they just didn't come. Amen. And it, you know, it makes me think of Malachi yeah. um, chapter three that says, I will rebuke the devourer That's right. for your sakes That's right. so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fall to bear fruit for you in the field, fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. It's so beautiful. I can just see maybe even an angel that just was like, not coming in this barn. <laughs> <laughs> so God, God is working in amazing ways. Just to finish up his story, uh, he said, I have something to tell you that you do not know. He's just telling me this last night. He said, I took a group of youth to my old village just Aww. this summer. And he said, um, when we got there, I wanted to see, because there was two people that had been his friend. One was his cousin and another little neighbor boy whose family must have had a little more openness in their hearts mm -hmm. because there was just this little neighbor boy that was his friend. And he went into the, um, went into the village and f came to find out 
that there are now six families oh. that are Christian in his village. Amen. And the one who is leading them is his friend. <laughs> his God friend is so that good. So Amen. God is working in incredible story in incredible we could ways sit all day here oh we and could listen to stories i wish we had yeah. more time but before yeah. we go to the address roll for asap ministries yeah. which we will put up in just a moment talk to us remind us one more time yeah. how much it takes to sponsor an ethnic missionary how much it will be for the little stuffed animal with the, and mm -hmm. how much to sponsor a child or a school so talk to us about that yeah. It's $30 a month to sponsor a child in one of these schools. And you can go on our website and actually choose your child. And we have a sponsorship program. And it depends on what type of worker. It usually ranges around $130 a month to sponsor a worker. And it depends on what country they're at as well. We have lots of other projects you can go. We have an online gift catalog there. And you know, we see how God has worked miracles in providing. And this year we need another miracle. So we're looking to God. And so pray for us that God will work miracles to provide for these precious children. Amen. 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 So it's $30 to sponsor a child. Go to ASAP's website. We want to encourage you to do that. We believe in what God is doing in and through the ministry of ASAP. We believe in the stories of changed lives and the missionaries who are going forward under persecution, under difficult experiences, under even torture or detainment or imprisonment, but still the gospel is going forward. So what we want to do right now is to put up the contact information for ASAP Ministries, encourage you to dig deep, to donate, to sponsor, to pray, to do whatever God calls you to do to support this incredible ministry. For more information about ASAP Ministries, please visit their website at asapministries.org. That's asapministries.org. You may also call them at 269-471-3026. That's 269-471-3026. In addition, you can write to them at P.O. Box 84, Berrien Springs, Michigan, 49103. That's P.O. Box 84, Berrien Springs, Michigan, 49103. My heart has been so blessed today as I've heard these incredible stories and we want to squeeze in one more story for you. Pastor Lisa, could you share a story in closing? Absolutely. Last summer we received word that there were two of our ASAP ethnic missionaries that had been just eating a meal with some people in a village and a knock had come at the door and, and the policemen were there saying, we're, we're taking you away, we're going to arrest you. They, there, was no, there was no reason. They hadn't been charged with anything. They're just... They were just put in jail. And they, um, they began to pray, told us, we began to pray, and we are hoping that they would just be let out in a day or two. Mm -hmm. And instead, the days went on, it was over a week, I don't remember the exact amount of time that they were in there, but we just kept praying. The people in that close country were praying, they didn't know what would happen, things are not fair in mm -hmm. these countries. Mm -hmm. And when um, they got out, we were just praising the Lord because, okay, you know, it's not a long sentence. It was maybe two weeks that they, they were in jail and we were praising the Lord. And then we got word um, from what would be similar to the conference president there. And he said, let me tell you the rest of the story. And he said, while they were in this jail, all of their cellmates came to know Jesus Christ. <gasps> Christ. Eight people became Christians while they were in jail. Amen. And not only that, but I believe it was the three policemen that had come to arrest them were asking questions about the gospel. Amen. That's a powerful story. Thank you so much, Julia and Pastor Lisa, for being here, for sharing your passion for mission, your passion to share Jesus with others. And we're so glad that you have joined us today as well as we've shared this incredible min ministry impacting the lives of the poor, the persecuted, and the unreached people group. I want to encourage you to get out and share Jesus. Amen. Bye-bye. Amen. Amen.